Last year, I was assigned a project on communism. So I did what anyone else of my capabilities would do. I read the definition. And I'm going to tell you something about communism that I learned personally. Communism is red hot. I never knew it. Karl had put marks all over me, and I loved it. <laughs> I swiftly and decisively toppled the student council and started the new council. <laughs> we had a motto, actually. It was, uh, stop Stalin. Start Lenin. Your time at the council. <laughs> Pep rallies got pretty intense. But with the book burnings and then those furry hats with the little flaps that came down, Oh, I forgot, the movie Miracle starring Kurt Russell was unfortunately banned. It's too patriotic. I take that back. Fortunately, all movies starring Kurt Russell were banned. They're awful. However, randomly one day, my history teacher gave me a mandatory reading assignment on the history of the USSR. And I realized something. Communism doesn't work. I mean, I was truly surprised. History had offered a practical solution to a misinterpretation on my own part. And I never studied the history, because my philosophy was, well, it's gone, it's never coming back, and it seems I'm not alone. Authors William Strauss and Neil Howe in their book, The Fourth Turning, portray a generation, that's us kids, that views history as a mere speed bump on the course to success by stating, history is not the subject high school students find of least interest or worth. And what we seem to be forgetting is that when we become numb to the lessons of history, we lose the wisdom of experience and set up futures that are destined for the failures of the past. So in order to better understand just how practical history is, we must first go back and explore the causes behind our lack of appreciation for it, then examine the implications it has in the present so we can finally look to the future for some practical solutions. One of the main reasons history is not getting the love our forefathers deserve is that the information seems like step-by-steps Patrick Duffy, unnecessary. <laughs> For example, according to the July 21st, 2003 edition of the Times Colonist, on average, history majors make 50% less money than something like a computer engineering major. This is where we've gone wrong. What we fail to understand is that the value of history does not lie in its monetary gain. It lies in the way that we develop a connection to the past. Former University of Texas professor Philip L. White explains, schools today are specifically geared towards job skills and job training. History is not a job skill. It's a civic responsibility. And thus gets the shaft, much like William Jennings Bryan in the presidential election of 1908. You don't get it, do you? Exactly. <laughs> but hey, our miseducation of history is partially to blame. In public schools, textbooks are made by compiling tidbits about past events with lessons about geography, politics, and the arts into a social studies stew. Robert Daniels, a history professor at the University of Vermont, laments. Most students entering the college level have some historical knowledge, but very little awareness of how history actually works. Much like if a mechanic were to learn a whole lot about individual parts of a car, but never actually learn to put them together. According to the Ascribe Newswire of June 15, 2004, a national study of high school seniors found that a majority of students couldn't really describe the purpose of NATO. Some of them couldn't really tell you when the Civil War took place. And some of them could not tell you who won World War II. And really the sad thing is, that should come as no surprise. If you view history as a waste of time, things that should be, or were once common knowledge, will become obscure trivia. But the effects, my friends, of a lost history are Hindenburgish. Great Depression-ish, the results of last election-ish. <laughs> Without a foundation in even our own history, we allow critical thinking to be taken out of our hands. 
You see, history gives us the tools to draw educated conclusions. It shines an experienced light on events of the present. George Orwell's 1945 novel, Animal Farm, highlights one negative effect of your forgotten history. When the animals overthrow the farmer, they are unwittingly re-enslaved by new dictators, the pigs. Now, if only the animals had the wherewithal to link the actions of the pigs with those of the oppressive humans in the past, they could have prevented Animal Farm's failure. Likewise, when we are taught the implications of historical events, we are able to better understand current events. So we bypass really stupid mistakes. But furthermore, our miseducation causes a reluctance to discuss our history, so we stand to lose the lessons learned. Nothing better exemplifies this than a story that was told to me by Brandon Cosby, administrator at the University of Indianapolis. So while teaching his first public speaking course, this Holocaust discussion arises. One student stood up and asserted that his grandfather, a former Nazi, claimed that the Holocaust had never occurred. So intrigued by this, Mr. Cosby invited the grandfather to class for discussion. However, another student confessed her concern because her grandmother was an Auschwitz survivor. So he invited her as well. Two days later, a former Nazi and a Holocaust survivor had an argument in front of a class. During the conversation, the Nazi fiercely proclaimed that the Holocaust was a complete exaggeration put into place so that the Americans have more reasons to hate the Germans. In response to this, the Jewish grandmother very calmly rolled up her left sleeve, exposing the numbers 874312. And she told the class this, know everything that you can about the world in which you live so that you can protect yourself from evil men like him. A personal interview with a grandmother or even the grandfather like this gives us the opportunity to see our world from the inside out. And unless we learn and document everything that we can from previous generations, their lessons and their wisdom are lost forever. So in order to hold on to these lessons, we must remedy our history literacy. Obviously, to correct the way that we view history, we have to correct the way that we teach it. In 2001, scores in Wisconsin achievement tests showed a very large decline in historical competency. So the University of Wisconsin started a program called Dialogues with Democracy, in which teachers from the fourth through 10th grades get a chance to renew their knowledge in history, while at the same time, making it come alive in every facet of the classroom. <laughs> Since it's been in effect, grades have significantly increased. Personally, I'm not saying that we shape this idea, mold it, change it, really do anything to it for that matter. I'm saying we steal it and use it for our own benefit. <laughs> we need to make history more personable to younger generations. And quite frankly, adults, a lot less boring road trips. If you're ever in the car alone or with your family for more than an hour, chances are that you will drive past at least one historical site and one more opportunity to experience a tangible history lesson. But most importantly, build a strong relationship with your grandparents. And if that's not possible, strive for a line of communication with an older neighbor. These people have stories that you wouldn't believe. Because somewhere between walking to school in the snow, being poor, I'm pretty sure there was a war after that, <laughs> lies the essence of a time that is now gone. History is a lot like a poem that is always being written. The syntax and the diction will differ throughout. But by reading the entire poem, we can understand its structure and what rhymes and that there is a message, but we have got to start reading between the lines, and oftentimes, reading it in general, even if it's just a little bit. So in the end, everything with my counsel was going fantastically until the CIA started observing my actions. 
keep chuckling because they're laughing and watching. You want to know something? I'm going to make sure that my revolution is never forgotten because that, comrades, colleagues, Bolsheviks, Reds, Whites, and everything that came before is a history all its own. <laughs>